It is one of the oldest surviving lighthouses on the entire Gulf Coast of the United States. Over the course of 150 years, it has witnessed the departure of tens of thousands of sailing vessels and has beamed a beacon of welcome to its shores for tens of thousands more. It has weathered the effects of more than a dozen major hurricanes, and while it bears a few scars from its encounters with the ravages of Mother Nature, it still lights the night, every night, with a flashing signal that spells Galaxy. This is Mary Ann Mobley, and I would like to tell you about a building that has a very special place in my heart. I was born in Biloxi, but the effects of storms and progress have changed much of what I recall about my birthplace. Whenever I return here, though, the Biloxi Lighthouse is here to remind me that I have come home. Let me share with you some of the reasons why. The Biloxi Lighthouse was built in 1848 to aid ships in navigating the Mississippi Sound, which was then the primary entrance to America's busiest seaport, the Port of New Orleans. Coastal charts of the Mississippi Sound indicated the unique signatures or identifying characteristic of each lighthouse so that one could be distinguished from another during both daytime and night. The white color of the Biloxi Lighthouse was its day mark, and the light shined as a continuous beacon for its night mark. At one time, the lighthouse was painted black with tar as a waterproofing agent, but boat captains complained about not being able to see the dark color against the trees on the shore, so the lighthouse was changed soon back to white. The only other alteration since then occurred when the light was electrified. Its night mark was then changed to the signal we see today, flashing three seconds on, followed by one second of dark before repeating the signal. Seen from the water, this flashing pattern means but one thing, and that is Biloxi. As the beacon of welcome to this small coastal community, the lighthouse revealed the narrow channel leading from the sound due north to the city's small harbor on the front beach. This shallow and tricky route was critical for packets and steamboats to ship and deliver the goods and services that allowed the community to thrive. Along with the freight came the daily shipments of the U.S. mail, but even more important cargo was the increasing number of passengers. As early as the 1830s, Biloxi had gained a reputation as a summer retreat for the prosperous families of New Orleans, who escaped the steamy streets of the city in the summer and flocked to the cooler breezes of the Gulf Coast. By the time the lighthouse was built, Biloxi was already a bustling summer resort. The design of the Biloxi Lighthouse called for a structural system of cast iron plating with an inner lining of brick to lend the structure strength and stability. Only one cast iron lighthouse had been built in America, and some people thought the plan to use this relatively new material was risky. The $12,000 contract for its construction was awarded to the foundry of Murray and Hazelhurst of Baltimore, Maryland, which at the time was one of the leading high-tech firms in America. We have to remember, though, that in 1848, high-tech did not mean building computers or satellites. Instead, Murray and Hazelhurst built the finest steam engines to power railroad locomotives, factories, and ships. All of the gently tapered cast iron plates for the lighthouse had to be engineered precisely so that they would fit together and create a strong building. The care taken to accomplish this task was successful. Once the work began, construction of the lighthouse in its adjacent cottage for its lighthouse keeper was completed in only six weeks. The light at Biloxi began to shine in May of 1848. Between then and the time that the lighthouse was automated in 1939, only six people are known to have held the title of Keeper of the Biloxi Lighthouse. The most important contributions over this period were made by three remarkable women who maintained the light 
for 74 of the light's 91 years of man service. These women were Mrs. Mary Reynolds, Marie Youngins, and her daughter Miranda Youngins. All three were held in the highest esteem by the people of their community because they performed a difficult job, a job that was vital to the success of the local community. Marie Youngins took over the job of lighthouse keeper in 1867, following the death of her husband. And the 52 year span of her career was one of the longest tenures in the history of the U.S. Lighthouse Service. She might have even served longer, but she was forced to retire at age 77. The duties of the lighthouse keeper were by no means easy for anyone, let alone women like Mary Reynolds and Marie Youngins, both widows with young children to raise. The routine of climbing the tower three or four times every 24 hours to tend the light would have been difficult under any circumstances, especially in the dark of the night. But imagine how much more difficult the job would have been in the oppressive heat and humidity of the average summer day or worse, in a tropical storm or hurricane. During the storms, the keeper was expected to tend the light day and night as usual and to keep it burning until the storm had passed. Sometimes storms lasted for several days. Imagine how frightening it must have been, climbing the stairs of the lighthouse during one of these severe storms hearing the deafening howl of the wind and the groans and crashes of wharves and boats as they were smashed by the waves. Just imagine having the base of the lighthouse filled with water from the storm surge, all the while wondering if your children were safe nearby. And once a storm had passed, imagine opening the door at the base of the lighthouse and looking out upon the desolation wreaked upon your community. History records the dates and names of more than two dozen hurricanes that bedeviled the Gulf Coast at Biloxi, including some of the most deadly and most costly storms of all time, such as the hurricanes of 1906, 1947, and Hurricane Camille in 1969. Before the 1920s, the Biloxi Lighthouse was located on the water's edge, and waves and storm surges often collapsed the breakwater, protecting the structure's foundations. Beginning as early as 1854, there were several attempts to protect the lighthouse with various forms of breakwaters, but none were successful. We are lucky that the lighthouse survived, because in September 1860, the storm surge from a hurricane was strong enough to undermine its foundations. The damage was so great that the structure tipped some two feet off a of vertical, making the lighthouse resemble the leaning tower of Pisa. The tilt was corrected in 1866 by excavating some of the sand under the foundation and letting gravity put the structure back to right. But the threat of a similar problem continued until a concrete breakwater was built in front of the lighthouse in 1924. Hurricanes and tropical storms are dramatic events for just about every coastal area, and most any Biloxi resident will tell you that the sight of the lighthouse, still standing after a storm, is a reassuring symbol of survival. But the lighthouse also plays a significant role in the everyday lives of its community. Throughout its history, and even with today's sophisticated radar and satellite navigation technology, every fisherman or sailor who has ever plied the Mississippi Sound has found the light to be a sign of a safe passage home. The same sentiment has been expressed by airmen returning to Keesler Air Force Base here in Biloxi because the lighthouse aligns with the approach to the main runway of Keesler Field. The connection between the land and the sea is an integral part of Biloxi's culture, and the lighthouse bridges these two worlds. As a result, the lighthouse has become a magnet for all manner of community activity. It watches over community celebrations like the annual Mardi Gras parade and the blessing of the shrimp fleet. 
The community dresses the lighthouse to express its feelings, whether in honor of a holiday, as an expression of hope in times of turmoil, or as a memorial in times of sorrow. The Biloxi Lighthouse is so important to us that when the U.S. Coast Guard decommissioned it, taking it out of service in 1967, the city of Biloxi immediately stepped in and received the transfer of the lighthouse in 1968. It has been operated ever since as what is formerly known as a private aid to navigation, continuing to guide recreational boats and fishing vessels to safe harbor. Today, the lighthouse is an inseparable part of our community's identity, and it is beloved by us all. While the light may be seen by mariners is only one of many landmarks along the sound, to me and to all the citizens of Biloxi, it is a beacon of welcome home.